Hello friends, uh, today the topic of our discussion is AWS Global Infrastructure. This is the first thing that uh, uh, we believe at Dotnetrics that our certification aspirants uh, should understand. The people who are uh, trying to become a solution architect, who are trying to uh, take up AWS as a career path, uh, they should have a this idea about AWS global infrastructure because it's not only helped them to understand the length and breadth of uh, AWS infrastructure in the cloud, but it also help by great means in understanding how to deploy an infrastructure which comply with the best recommended practices by AWS. So AWS suggests that your infrastructure should be highly available and uh, uh, secure fault tolerant and ready any kind of disaster recovery plan so all these kind of things should be there in order to deploy a robust enterprise scale business or a website or an application on aws so in order to understand that in order to understand how you can do all this thing how you can achieve it in the cloud on aws cloud uh, the first step is understanding the aws global infrastructure and that is what we are going to talk about it aws is uh, global infrastructure as covered more than uh, 55 availability zone it's uh, not more than exactly it's a, it's a right now the current is stated it is 55 availability zone 18 geographic regions one local regions and uh, the plan for, uh, there are plan for bringing up 12 more availability zone in four regions so this all this stuff sounds up pretty much vague to you i can understand that you may be thinking those who are very much new to aws they may be thinking that what is this geographic regions what is availability zone what is this local region so uh, what we mean to say by this is that uh, in aws data centers are located in geographically distinct uh, regions in different countries uh, which are separated by a very great distances so that uh, god forbid any kind of big natural calamity is stuck still business continuity remain ensured uh, and these consist of a geographic regions these great geographic regions and in these these regions are capable of independent existence they can run and function properly well in isolation moreover all geographic regions inside all geographic region there are at least two or more availability zone availability zones are nothing but the data centers cluster data centers um, and uh, why they are two or more why they are not only one because to keep your application or your infrastructure fault tolerant highly available it's mandatory uh, it's it's a recommended practice or a kind of policy that aws is following that they should have at least before declaring any geographic region a part of aws infrastructure they should have at least two availability zone in place so that they can say that whatever application whatever website whatever service you are going to host on aws cloud is going to remain highly available highly redundant uh, fault tolerant given the fact if you have architected your infrastructure in compliance with aws best recommended practices so that's that's the whole sort behind uh, these kind of demarcation availability zone geographic region and local region moreover every availability zone gets connected to each other they are also kind of a standalone cloud infrastructures but they are connected via each other inside a region two or more availability zones are connected via each other by very high uh, bandwidth a very robust networking and where the latency is in the like uh, single digit milliseconds and uh, uh, whenever you uh, try to replicate your data it doesn't take hardly take any minutes time because uh, most of the time that reported value of bandwidth that exists between uh, two availability zone is in the terabit so you can you can assume how much data can get replicated within seconds so there are some services which take uh, those are managed services which take full leverage of these uh, availability zone you launch one service 
automatically that the data related to that services get replicated on more than one availability zone this is the case where aws is managing the entire services uh, like uh, your s3 bucket we'll talk about it in our later videos what they are and how you are going to use it in different architecture so aws managed services they take uh, they take care of these points that how they can create a highly available service or highly available infrastructure when you use a aws managed service that managed service is capable enough to take care of this issue of high availability and fault tolerance so just like um, i can give you an example if you launch an s3 bucket it provides you 11.9 durability that means that there are more than uh, your whatever file you are going to store on s3 it is going to be stored in a number of copies on different devices so suppose if a couple of data centers goes down even then your data will remain safe and available for use so inside a region of course you have the freedom to replicate your data cross region replication is also available but given the fact that we want to minimize we want to keep the latency to the least possible value uh, in that scenario you should have um, your infrastructure limited to region but uh, there are some uh, things that you can use where you can define your infrastructure over different region and is still meeting the least uh, latency requirements set by your client or the customer which uh, the the latency single digit latency or double digit latency which makes your customer happy and satisfied with your services so that can be achievable but you need to have a more deeper understanding about aws infrastructure and aws various infrastructure services and various uh, other services that are at your disposal like content delivery uh, service uh, like cloud front etc so you can you can take advantage of all those stuff we'll talk about it later so uh, in the middle east one uh, bahrain um, the new region is about to launch as well as hong kong sar sweden and another go second gov cloud region in us uh, in us region it's already one gov cloud is existing this is for the government agencies which uh, implement high levels of regulatory and compliance requirement where the data is too much under the scrutiny uh, like um, the uh, data like uh, you can say the uh, tax related data of uh, US citizens so they try to keep and store those kind of data on the gov cloud which is also hosted on uh, AWS so that's a kind of achievement for AWS in in such time moreover this shows the kind of uh, reliability that US government has on AWS uh, infrastructure so that's that's one another thing that we can look into now talking about the global infrastructure global infrastructure we have already discussed these are the regions and the numbers that you are looking at is the number of availability zones so if we see that in the north virginia region there are six availability zones. that's a maximum for any region so it means that inside north virginia region you have the advantage of maximized application redundancy the maximum chances that your uh, application remain available all the time all the time remain up downtime remain to the least possible value but it's not that this in the like the availability zones are in itself are quite robust infrastructure in aws and uh, these kind of failures are not very often not very often in, in fact they're very remote possibility it happens once in four or five years so these kind of thing does happen i'm not telling that they are completely secure but if as i said if you go by the best recommended practices of aws and create your infrastructure taking full advantage of aws provided global infrastructure there will be hardly any chance that your application or website goes down at any point of time now in other regions too you can see us east there are north virginia ohio in us west it's north california Oregon so there are three 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 each in Asia Pacific region we have Mumbai where we have two availability zones Seoul uh, in Korea too they have created one local zone also in Seoul Singapore there are three Sydney three availability zone Tokyo four availability zone Osaka in Japan local one and Central Canada two China there are two uh, region uh, in Beijing two availability zone in Beijing and three in Zixia 
so but china region is not accessible by the other account holders like uh, like i i have created my account in mumbai region so i cannot access it uh, from mumbai so these uh, regions and uh, this china region and availability zone are accessible only for the accounts that have been created in the china or in, on like means they follow a strict measure you can understand china follow a strict their network freedom is quite uh, under the surveillance so they don't take any kind of uh, risk over it so coming to the europe we have in frankfurt we have three availability zone we can see three availability zone in ireland three london three so three is a common denomination where uh, we see that uh, um, the availability zones are distributed uh, gov cloud there are three availability zone and these uh, these green circles that you are seeing these are the new regions that are that are coming up the first one in the middle east in, is coming up in bahrain in hong kong um, it's a quite dynamic economic uh, capital in south china so these this is the basic uh, distribution and if you see that entire it's uh, the global infrastructure of aws is actually covering the entire uh, globe so whether you are sitting your you are sitting in australia and your customers are there in uh, south america sao paulo you can still uh, serve your customer with the ease with providing least possible latency and best customer experience so this kind of things is all achievable using aws best recommended practices while designing a highly robust cloud infrastructure so that's it for this today's video guys see you in uh, next video thank you